commercial space industry is taking giant leaps. It will take private astronauts up to the International Space Station in just a few months. Pretty incredible here. Well, Axiom Space recently announced who's next in line for one of its upcoming flights. Of course, our resident pilot, Natasha Stenbach, talked with the astronaut in training. So exciting news uh, for so many reasons, Natasha. So many exciting reasons, yes. It was fabulous to talk to John Schaffner. So the announcement from Axiom Space about its flight crew for the 2022 Axiom 2 mission is the ideal combination of private citizen pilots and career astronaut. So pilot and champion GT racer John Schaffner will join NASA's first female commander of the ISS and record holder for time in space, Peggy Whitson. I spoke with John about what he expects in the months and years ahead. Three, two, one, zero. Ignition, lift off. I grew up watching all the space flights, you know, in the 60s and 70s. So I was a, I was hooked into space. John Schaffner, private citizen and pilot, is joining the likes of record-holding former NASA astronaut Peggy Whitson on a trip to the International Space Station. Their mission? Take science into space, perform research in microgravity, and ultimately pave the path to a new centralized space hub. As a private citizen going, you know, uh, rather than me just go up and fill up an SD card with selfies, eight or 10 days that I'll be on station, I want to do something purposeful. I study and research and invest in support life sciences. Schaffner will work with biotech company 10X Genomics, looking into questions like the impact space has on the human body. On Earth, people affected by osteoporosis will lose 1% bone density in about a year. In space and microgravity, you lose that in about one month. Learning how to for humans to live in space long term and to exist, particularly if you consider a Mars mission, there are things that happen to the human body in microgravity that we don't fully understand yet and cannot manage adequately. And Schaffner will have a legend by his side on the trip. Peggy Whitson, who I have the privilege to fly with. One of the most revered astronauts, I won't, she's my favorite astronaut. She's a biochemist, PhD, and she will be porting and helping with this research. John Schaffner has always dreamt of becoming an astronaut. Aviation has been a huge part of his life since he was a teenager, flying all kinds of fixed wing aircraft and helicopters. And as a pilot myself, I can tell you, we all have to start somewhere usually in a trainer just like this one, a single engine, 150 horsepower airplane. And you know, there really is a shared skill set between flying in the lower atmosphere here and becoming an astronaut. Uh, for one, discipline, well, we all use a checklist. We all have a checklist, of course. As an astronaut, you're gonna have something a little bit more complicated than this one, but discipline, safety, preparation, training, it's all a part of risk management. And that's what the training is about. You know, we, we are at the beginnings of undergoing a long series of, of training episodes, uh, both at the ISS mock-up module here and around the world in various launch vehicles to uh, understand what's required to manage the process of going to orbit and recovering, living on station in crew dynamics. It's a, it's a get along environment, right? So John, um, there will be students of all ages watching this and kind of leaning on every one of your words and thinking to themselves, mm -hmm. okay, um, I don't have to work for the government to possibly be up in space. This is exciting. This is awesome. Um, kind of give some words of advice, little nuggets of wisdom for our youth. What do they need to be working on and thinking about right now to get up there? Well, the, a very reliable path would be a science path, um, engineering path, something because that's what we need a lot of, uh, period, in the U.S. today, good engineers, scientists, um, researchers, and that's what space is about. It's a learning environment. To go to Mars, to go to the moon, uh, takes a lot of development. Space is full of questions ready to be answered and we need those people that are curious and want to go there to do that. Yeah, 
So that was pretty exciting. So um, Axiom 1, the Axiom 1 mission, that'll be early 2022. Mm -hmm. And then number two mission with Peggy Whitson and John Schaffner, that'll be going up, they think, perhaps seven or eight months after the first mission. Um, so that could be the middle of 2022, not too My far gosh. away. And it's fascinating, the idea that the space program is being turned over to, to private corporations. And you forget how dangerous it is. Mm -hmm. And there's yet to be an accident with a private corporation, but it is still the frontier and a very exciting frontier. Yeah, another option, of course, here in the U.S., because, you know, not just NASA. And as we see, we had a story just yesterday about, of China. course, China making mm -hmm. strides. So this is a big development as well. So that's very cool. And maybe one day in the near future, Natasha, <laughs> you'll go beyond our atmosphere. A longer checklist. Uh-huh. A longer checklist. Yeah. I'm ready for it. <laughs> I think you could do it. Thanks for that report. That's very cool. Sure.